we're going to be looking at matter waves and this is particles behaving as waves. De Broly suggested that if light can have a dual nature, that is it can behave like a wave and it can behave like a particle, then matter can also have a dual nature. And he hypothesized that moving particles can behave like waves and so they have a wavelength which will be given by Planck's constant divided by the mass times velocity of the particle. And mass times velocity is equal to momentum of the particle. So we can say the wavelength, which is known as de Broglie's wavelength. So that is the wavelength for a particle traveling as a wave is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And Broly's hypothesis was confirmed by the diffraction of electrons through a thin foil of graphite. And diffraction is a wave property. So the regularly spaced atoms of the graphite layers acted like a 2D diffraction grating and so a pattern of bright and dark rings were observed. So we're seeing the spreading out or the diffraction of the electrons as they pass through the spacing, the gap between the graphite atoms. The wavelength that was obtained experimentally from the electron diffraction experiment was 1.65 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And the wavelength that was predicted by de Broglie from his hypothesis was very similar. And so electron diffraction confirmed de Broglie's hypothesis. And he won a Nobel Prize in physics for, for his hypothesis. The diagram on the left is showing the diffraction pattern made by a beam of X-rays passing through a thin aluminium foil. And the diagram on the right is showing the diffraction pattern made by a beam of electrons passing through the same aluminium foil. And the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons is same as the wavelength of X-rays. So it's in the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters. And you can see that the diffraction patterns are very similar, that the spacing of the bright rings are the same. So here we have the electron diffraction patterns for electrons traveling at two different speeds. And so you can see that the electrons traveling at the lower speed produces a larger amount of diffraction. There is more spreading of the bright rings. So you have larger spacing between the bright rings. And so to have a larger amount of diffraction, these electrons have a longer wavelength. And so that means then that the larger the wavelength, the slower that the wavelength is inversely proportional to the speed of the electrons. And this agrees with de Broglie's hypothesis. If you remember from diffraction, to get maximum diffraction, then the wavelength has to be a similar size to the size of the gap. So for electron diffraction, to get maximum observable diffraction, then the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons has to approximately equal the interatomic spacing, that is the spacing between atoms. And that is in the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters. And from the electron diffraction experiments, you can determine the 
spacing between atoms from the spacing between the diffraction rings and the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. So can a golf ball diffract? So if we consider a golf ball of mass 46 grams moving at 30 meters per second, then its de Broglie wavelength will equal Planck's constant divided by the mass in kgs multiplied by the velocity, which would be 30. And so that gives a de Broglie wavelength of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. So for the golf ball to diffract, it would need to pass through a gap of size that would be in the same order of magnitude as its wavelength. So in the order of 10 to minus 34 meters. So that's not physically possible for a golf ball to pass through that small size gap. And so a moving golf ball cannot behave like a wave. It does not exhibit the dual nature, the wave nature. So only very small particles like electrons and neutrons can diffract. So to summarise the dual nature of particles and waves, this nature can never be observed simultaneously. That means it will either act as a particle or it'll act as a wave, but never both at the same time. Moving particles can behave like waves. For example, they can diffract only when the wavelength is similar in size to the size of the gap or the size of the atom. And so photons is the particle form of electromagnetic waves, whereas matter waves is the waveform of moving particles and the experimental evidence for photons is the photoelectric effect and the experimental evidence for matter waves is electron diffraction or particle diffraction. Photons have no mass but matter waves will be the mass of the particle. Photons have energy given by HF and matter waves have energy and because they're moving particles they have kinetic energy. The wavelength of a photon will be given by the wave speed divided by the frequency of the electromagnetic waves whereas the wavelength for matter waves is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the moving particle.